Welcome back to Network Africa. So Ghana's Chief Justice has announced the dismissal of 20 judges and magistrates following a thorough investigation, which started, of course, with a journalist's story, uh, which was revealed in August. Justice Wood says she wanted to assure the public that the Judicial Council, the regulatory body for judges, would take prompt and resolute action to redeem the image of the judiciary. Meanwhile, the Judicial Council secretary said some of the sack judges have been stripped of their benefits, but that the other judges was retained after they showed remorse and apologized profusely for bringing the judiciary into disrepute. As SAC judges and magistrates were from lower courts and had been investigated by a committee appointed by the Chief Justice. Now, one judge was cleared of the charges. A second inquiry focusing on similar allegations against 12 high court judges has not yet concluded its work. I have uh, joining me now uh, Chukwe Meka Eze. He's a legal practitioner. He's going to help us understand uh, Ghana's judiciary system and as it affects the rest of us here in Africa. Uh, Chukwe Meka, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you, Amarocha. Well, this is just one of those rare cases you see in Africa about the judiciary system. It does tell a lot about what's going on and the things are really changing. What's your take on what's been going on in Ghana? I think Ghana is setting the example. Ghana, we know, had always been setting the example. Uh, from its time of Gold Coast, from its uh, giving us uh, Kwame Nkrumah, the son of Africa. And uh, since he started practicing this uh, variation of democracy, Ghana has been consistent, at least in ensuring that uh, democracy worked in Ghana. It has been changing the parties every eight years. Ghana has come to stay, and you recall when the, uh, at, in the first term of, uh, of uh, President Obama, Ghana was one of those places he visited to sh encourage them in what they are doing. So Ghana has really set an example. And, and setting an example also in the judiciary with um, the recent happening, uh, the revelation made in August by that journalist uh, showing um, uh, judges receiving bribes and they have been said to have been receiving bribes and also receiving sex to influence judgments in court cases. Um, this does say a lot, you know, about that the judiciary is able to cleanse itself without the intervention of government. Yes. Ghana's constitution in section 125 specifically provides that justice emanates from the people. Mm. And uh, you can't see such a provision in the Nigerian constitution. So you discover that Ghana has a people-oriented view of justice. We have an institutionalized view of justice and uh, Ghana has a way if you look if you remember Justice Georgina when he gave, she gave judgment with respect to the presidential election in Ghana the whole Ghanaians waited with bated breath for that decision nobody accused the Supreme Court mm -hmm. no allegation she has paid her dues she's above board like Caesar's wife mm -hmm. so Ghana judiciary is in good hands. You, there is nobody in Ghana. In fact, Ghana is a place I visited many times, and I'm current with happenings in that place. And I know that they respect their judiciary let's, very, very well. Great. So let's now focus on what has recently happened. The judges that have been dismissed, some of them uh, were retained after they showed remorse and apologized profusely for bringing the judiciary. No, their benefits were retained. Yeah, but some, yeah some of them, their benefits were retained. Uh, but uh, this does set a precedent for the rest of us in Africa, doesn't it? Uh, will we you know, see a time when people would you know, develop more confidence in the judiciary without having to, to drag the judiciary through a media trial? I agree with you. It has set a salubrious precedent. Very good one for that matter, because when Anas Arameyo, Anas, uh, uh, started this Anas video, I mean, he was not ridiculed. He was not taken for granted. And it took him two years painstakingly to come to where he has come. Mm. He said that journalism will mean nothing if it does not add progress to the society. So not only will the judiciary emulate the judiciary of Ghana, but the Nigerian journalists have to emulate this wonderful journalist from Ghana. So having showed that video and petitioned the president 
and the Chief Justice of Ghana, pursuant to Section 151 of the Ghanaian Constitution, it became apparent that considering the kind of Chief Justice Georgina that we have in Ghana, within two days of receiving that complaint, the Judicial Council of Ghana met. They met on September 2nd after receiving the complaint on 31st. So the speed shows the seriousness the judiciary in Ghana takes, the, the, the judiciary in Ghana, the seriousness with which they take their work. If it were here, it might have taken three months, six months of blackmail before somebody will consider looking at that petition. So that's why I congratulate them. The speed, and between September 2nd and December 8th, we already have a result. Eight circuit judges dismissed and 13 uh, ma uh, district magistrates dismissed. I want us to talk about those judges and the magistrates that have been dismissed. How does the judiciary ensure that they don't go ahead to uh, practice outside of you know, their No, certainly. With, basically, you recall that... Uh, Naming and shaming is a tool. Definitely, as they have apologized, uh, uh, those that have apologized may have been reconsidered. Remember, they have been ret retired or dismissed with their benefits. Mm -hmm. That means it might be uh, commuted to compulsory retirement. Mm -hmm. In that situation, only four we are allowed to be dismissed without their benefits. So it seems that many of them could still return to practice, having apologized to the people of Ghana. They didn't just apologize to the Chief Justice. They, in fact, the Chief Justice was not a member of the disciplinary committee that had their case. They have apologized to the people of Ghana. Thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. I really appreciate your being here on the program.